Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing? Um, it's been a few days. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over um, what I've been doing, what you've been doing. Um, like, I've, I've had all these ideas for videos, and I'm like wanting to do them, but at the same time, I'm like, I'd rather almost just talk to you and hang out, you know, like, have some sort of conversation going. <clears throat> so, um, today, I think I'm just gonna chat with you, like, I, I, I miss chatting, and, um, I've been doing so much stuff because of the crowdfunding campaign and, um, Patreon and my website that I feel like I'm not, um, I'm not just like letting loose and chilling with you, if you know what I mean. So, um, so that's that. Um, I cut my hair a bit. Um, I got some new clippers because, and I actually trimmed my beard back. Because um, it was getting kind of crazy. And now that I'm looking at it, I don't like this. I'm going to have to get rid of this today. I got a new pair of clippers yesterday. Because the clippers I had sounded like a fucking helicopter. And like whenever I would get too near my ear, I'm just like, fuck this. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. So, um, so that's that. Um, tomorrow, I'm actually kind of excited. I'm going to be on the Chris Roberts podcast. Um, I don't know when they air from when they record, but um, it's like a podcast about writing and stuff. And um, he has different guests on talking about just different shit. And it's actually really cool. Um, and it's on Spotify too. Like it's on iTunes, I think. I've I've listened to it on Spotify, but um if you haven't checked that show out yet, um check it out. <sighs> so there's that. Um the Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, actually before I do that, let me just show you guys. Um right now we're at three oh seven, so we're a little over um, a quarter of the way there. Um, so this is week two. And you guys are like, week two? I feel like you've been pushing this down my fucking throat forever. Yes, this is only week two, guys. Um, but I'm only doing it through the end of the month. So we either got to do it, like we got to shit or get off the pot. That's what that's what I always say. Um, and probably um, grandparents of certain generations. Um so yeah, so um, if you haven't done this yet, get down there um, in the link below and um, get crack a whacking on that. But um, so uh, fear and loathing, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Um, if if you remember me saying the other day, I'm like, yeah, I started reading it and I just read the whole thing through again. Um, it's really fun because some of the people who are reading this are reading it for the first time and being able to see this through somebody else's eyes is, um, it's just so, uh, refreshing because I first read this. I want to say in 99 was the first time I read this. That's probably extremely accurate. And um, I read it at least once a year. Sometimes, like this year, I've read it like six times. But, um, <clears throat> but I started reading it again last night. And... Um, it just, it hits me so hard. And, I mean, fuck, it always makes me want to go to Vegas and do horrible, stupid shit. I mean, just the opening line. I know I've said this before, but it's just like... Um, we were somewhere around Barstow on the edge of the desert when the drugs began to take hold. Like, um, 
if you remember where we were living out in the desert, um, Barstow was probably <clears throat> the closest, biggest little city. Barstow is not a big city by any means, but it's a city people are familiar with because in order to get to Vegas, you have to drive through Barstow. So, um, uh, that is just something like, especially if you've seen the movie, the Johnny Depp movie, um, where they, where they are, that is very similar, like, um, to where, <laughs> to where, um, we lived for like two years and some change. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I did want to read a bit to you because, um, what, a lot of people don't get when I talk about how this book is hysterical and um, and then just the next sentence after that first one I read just to give you an idea of the um, I remember saying something like I feel a bit lightheaded maybe you should drive and suddenly there was a terrible roar all around us and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats all swooping and screeching and diving around the car, which was going about a hundred miles an hour with the top down to Las Vegas. And a voice was screaming, Holy Jesus, what are these goddamn animals? Okay, so it's crazy and hysterical in the whole thing. And that's usually what people like think of when they think of this book. But there are some like heart heart wrenching prose in this book as well and so i wanted to read um a bit of this i think i'm going to skip that bit okay so i'm going to read a bit to you this is like from chapter what is this four yeah this is from chapter four Strange memories on this nervous night in Las Vegas. Five years later, six. It seems like a lifetime, or at least the, a main era. The kind of peak that never comes again. San Francisco in the middle 60s was a very special time and place to be a part of. Maybe it meant something. Maybe not, in the long run. But no explanation, no mix of words or music or memories can touch that sense of knowing that you were there and alive in that corner of time and the world, whatever it meant. History is, a hard, is hard to know because of all the hired bullshit. But even without being sure of history, it seems entirely reasonable to think that every now and then, the energy of a whole generation comes to a head in a long, fine flash for reasons that nobody really understands at the time and which never explain in retrospect what actually happened. Then I'm going to skip a little bit here. Um, there was a madness in any direction at any hour. If not across the bay, then up the Golden Gate or down 101 to Los Altos or La Honda. You could strike sparks anywhere. There was a fantastic universal sense that whatever we were doing was right and we were winning. And that, I think, was the handle. That sense of inevitable victory over the forces of old and evil. Not in any mean or military sense. We didn't need that. Our energy would simply prevail. There was no point in fighting, on our side or theirs. We all had the momentum. We were riding the crest of a high and beautiful wave. So now, less than five years later, you can go up on a steep hill in Las Vegas and look west, and with the right kind of eyes, you can almost see the high water mark. That place where the wave finally broke and rolled back.
I don't know why. I don't know why that gets me, but it always does. It's just a really, um, It's just a beautiful bit. Um, oh, shit. Just a lot of um, hope. But at the same time, there's this sense of, like, loss, because you feel so on top of the world, and then, um, like, using the wave analogy, like, you're on top of the world, and then, like, the tide starts to come out, and when the tide starts going out, you usually don't even realize that anything's happening other than the fact that you're in this, like, moving bit of nature. And then you don't realize that the tides pulled you out until you're so far back that you could go, shit, like, the shore is really far away now. And, like, um... Be, oh shit, like seeing hope and loss, like at the same time, by having to like, see a high water mark, it's just, um, really good stuff, and this book is full of shit like that, and then yeah, like, um, it'll talk about like, um, Kill the body and the head will die. This line appears in my notebook for some reason. Perhaps some connection with Joe Frazier. Is he still alive? Still able to talk? Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ollie be belted incredibly off his pedestal by a human hamburger on the verge of death. Um, so good. Oh, this is great, too. Um. Wait, is that right here? Oh, I love this. Yeah, the truth is, we're going to Vegas to croak a skag bear named Savage Henry. I've known him for years, but he ripped us off. And you know what that means, right? Savage Henry has cashed his check. <laughs> uh, we're going to rip his lungs out and eat them. <laughs> okay, seriously, like, um, I'm being a little over dramatic here, but um, this book is just so much fun. I fucking love it. Um, and I love when you could have just like madness and lunacy that makes like no sense. And then get some heavy moving bit, you know. Um, Hunter S. Thompson does that better than most. Better than most. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Um, the podcast this week um, is, uh, I'm going to be talking about getting, um, my first pedicure in years, um, cause I fucking needed it, dude, oh my god, um, yeah, like, if there's one, like, luxury, um, I would enjoy on a weekly basis, it would be pedicures, so, um, 
So that'll be on Saturday. I don't even know what day today is. Is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? I don't I don't know what day it is. Um, oh, Tuesday. I could just look at my computer and it says in the corner. Um, so yeah, so that'll be Saturday. Oh, and then over on Patreon, because I've been posting so much stuff on um, my website because of the... Oh, wait, no, sorry. Um... I've been, I found a bunch of, uh, files of me playing cover songs, like, on my guitar and singing and shit, and I can't, like, post those anywhere for copyright reasons, um, but because, um, Patreon, um, is, like, got, like, a blocked area where most people can't get into, I'm like, oh, shit, I could, like, put this stuff up on there, um, so... Like, yesterday I posted um, a Waylon Jennings cover I did, and today I posted a Smashing Pumpkins cover, and um, I might do that just until I run out of stuff to post, um, just because it's nice to have a venue for that stuff. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in that, it's uh, you can go to my website. There's a link down below for Patreon, but... Um, Anyway, so, um, if you are reading Fear and Loathing and it's your first time, like, down below, tell me about it. Like, I'd love to hear, like, your thoughts on it. Um, and one other thing that people have been saying about it is, um, how afraid they are of taking drugs because of that book. And that's probably a good thing. Like, you're probably, um, on the right track there. So, uh, so yeah. So, um, it's all good, and, um, I think Friday I'm going to be doing another, um, Patreon live stream, but maybe I'll do, um, a, a live stream on here sometime this week, too, whether it's a writing stream or a, um, reading stream if I could fucking read something without like bawling the, like a goddamn fucking baby so um we'll see how that goes so anyway let me know down below what you guys think of all of this and um if you get pedicures or not if you uh like fear and loathing if you like taking drugs if you um like what you had for breakfast today um if you've ever killed a man, like, let me know all these things down below. It'll be fun. So, um, kisses, everybody, and I will see you later. Go look at Pink Rainbow.